Hi judges, welcome to another segment of One Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time we were able to define the hyperbola, to draw its parts, and to get its standard equation with center located at the origin and with center located at HK. For today we'll be having two examples. So we will be graphing the hyperbola when we are given an equation. But before we could graph or sketch a hyperbola, all we have to do first is to identify its transverse axis. So for problem number one, we are given x squared over 9 minus y squared over 7 is equal to 1. Reminder that in order for us to determine the transverse axis is that all we need to do or all we need to find is the term that is positive. And in this case, that is x squared over 9. If this is x squared over 9, therefore, we could say that this is transverse axis x or tax. And our major axis or our transverse axis is horizontal. Okay? So, for the next step, it now takes the form x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So, if this is now the form of the hyperbola, we're now ready to solve for the value of a squared, b squared, and c squared. Therefore, our a squared is equal to 9. If a squared is equal to 9, therefore our a is equal to plus minus 3. Our b squared is equal to 7, therefore our b is equal to plus minus 7. My plus minus square root of 7 and b should be plus minus approximately square root of 7 is equal to plus minus 2.7. Okay? So, we have a squared, we have b squared, therefore we're now ready to solve for c squared. And that c squared is equal to the sum of a squared and b squared. a squared is equal to 7, b squared is e a squared is equal to 9, rather, b squared is equal to 7, therefore 9 plus 7 is equal to 16, and our c now is equal to plus minus 4. Having the value of a squared, b squared, and c squared, therefore we're now ready to determine the values or the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the covertices. But then remember that if this is the given, we only have x squared and y squared, the center is located at the origin, and that is point zero zero. So, therefore, the foci is plus minus C0 because we are changing the value of the x-axis or the x-coordinate of the center. That is plus minus C0. Therefore, we'll be having two values, F1 and F2. Our F1 should be, what is our C? That becomes 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. And for our vertices, that becomes plus minus A0. Therefore, that is V1, V2. What is the value of A? That is plus minus 3. Therefore, V1 is positive 3, 0. And V2, which is negative 3, 0. And how about for the covertices? Since the covertices is located on the y-axis, because that is the conjugate axis, therefore, this becomes 0 plus minus b. Therefore, we'll be having w1 and w2. Our w1 should be 0, and that is, what is our b? Positive 2.7, and w2, which is 0, negative 2.7. So, we're now ready to plot these points. So, let us now plot the points. Okay. So, we have 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is our F1. Its location is 4, 0. Our F2 is negative 4, 0. So this is our F2. That is negative 4, 0. Our V1 is 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. This is our V1. That is 3, 0. Our V2 is this one. And that is negative 3, 0. How about for our covertices? That is 0 plus minus 2.7. 1, 2, 3. Therefore, this is W1. Its location is 0, 2.7. W2, 1, 2, 3. This is our W2. 
Therefore, this W2 is located at 0, negative 2.7. So, we now, we're now ready to graph the auxiliary rectangle. So, this is our auxiliary rectangle. Just connect the vertices and the co-vertices. So, this is the auxiliary rectangle. And what is the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle? So, the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle is equal to 2a by 2b. Therefore, that is 2 times what is our a? Our a is 3 by 2 times our b, which is square root of 7. Or that is 6 by 2 square root of 7. So, that is the dimension of our auxiliary rectangle. So, from the center, we could now draw the asymptotes. These are the asymptotes. Okay. Therefore, our hyperbola is opening to the right and to the left. Okay. So, this is our hyperbola. It will get closer and closer to the asymptotes, but they will never meet at any point. Okay. So, what if you're now asked to get the equation of the asymptote? So, for the equation of the asymptote, this is how we do it. Therefore, get the equation that is x squared over 9 minus y squared over 7 and then equate that to 0. And this becomes x squared over 9 is equal to y squared over 7. Cross multiply 7 to the other side and this becomes 7 over 9 times x squared is equal to y squared. Get the square root of both sides. Get the square root of both sides. Therefore, we'll now be having square root of 7 plus minus square root of 7. Square root of 9 is 3. x is equal to y. Or, we'll be having two equations of the asymptotes. One equation is the positive one, which is y is equal to positive square root of 7 over 3x. And the next one, y is equal to negative square root of 7 over 3x. So this is how we sketch an equation of the hyperbola when the transverse axis is horizontal. What if we're now given another example in which the transverse axis now is the y-axis? Is the process still the same? Well, definitely, yes, the process is still the same, but then... The transverse axis is now different. Let's, have, let's now have here the second example. Okay? For the second example, we are given y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9 is equal to 1. In order for us to determine the transverse axis, all we have to do is to identify the positive term. And the positive term is this one. Therefore, it now takes the form y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. And in this case, we'll now be calling this as tai, wherein the transverse axis is vertical. Therefore, if this is vertical, we could find A and C in the vertical axis, okay, or in the y-axis. Therefore, we'll now be able to compute for the value of A squared. Therefore, A squared is equal to 16, and A is equal to plus minus 4. B squared is equal to 9. Therefore, B is equal to plus minus 3. Therefore, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And that a squared is equal to 16 plus b squared, which is equal to 9. 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. That is c squared. Therefore, c is equal to plus minus 5. And since this is um, vertical hy hyperbola, therefore, we will be changing the values of um, the y coordinate of the center if we are dealing with the foci and the vertices. Therefore, f now, the formula for f now should be 0 plus minus c. We'll be having two values of f, that is f1 and f2. Therefore, that is 0. What is the value of c? c is 5 and our f2 is 0, negative 5. And for our vertices, that is 0 plus minus a. Therefore, we'll be having two values, v1, which is 0, positive 4, and V2 is 0, negative 4. And for our co-vertices, therefore, the conjugate axis or the minor axis of the hyperbola is the x-axis. We'll be changing the value of the x-axis with plus minus B, 0. 
Therefore, that is W1. What is our plus minus B? So that is positive 3, 0. And our W2 is negative 3, 0. Okay. So in this case, we're now ready to graph. So in graphing, so we have 0, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is F1. And its location is 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is our F2. And the location is 0, negative 5. So where is our V1? Where is our V1? Our V1 is 0, 4. And, and our V2 is 0, negative 4. So this is our V1. Its location is 0, 4. This is our V2. Its location is 0, negative 4. Our W and our W1 and W2 is 3, 0, negative 3, 0. 1, 2, 3. This is our W1. Its location is 3, three 0. This should be 3, 0. And our W2, 1, 2, 3. This is our W2 and that is negative 3, 0. Okay. So in order for us to solve for the asymptotes, let us first get the auxiliary rectangle. And in getting the auxiliary rectangle, remember to just connect the points of the vertices and the covertices. So this is our auxiliary rectangle. Okay? And we're now able to draw the asymptotes. Always remember that the diagonals of the rectangle are the equation or are the asymptotes. Therefore, our hyper hyperbola now is opening up and down. So this is our hyperbola. So what is the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle? For the dimension of our auxiliary rectangle, therefore that is 2a by 2b and that becomes 2 times what is our a? Our a is, our a is, what is our a? Our a, our a is 4 by 2b. What is our b? Our b is 3. Therefore, this is now 8 by 6. And 8 by 6, this is 4, this is 4, this is... Okay, this is 6, I mean, and this is 8. So, that is now the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle. So, what is now the asymptotes or the equation of the asymptotes? For the equation of the asymptotes, again, we have the same process. And in getting the equation of the asymptotes, just write, again, the given y squared over 16 minus x squared over 9 and then equate that to 0. Therefore, we'll be having y squared over 16 is equal to x squared over 9. Cross multiply we'll be getting y squared is equal to 16 over 9 x squared. Get the square root, get the square root. Therefore, this becomes y is equal to square root of 16 over 9, that is plus minus 4 over 3 x. Okay? Therefore, we'll be having two equations of the asymptotes, the positive one, which is positive 4 over 3 x, and the negative one, which is negative 4 over 3 x. Okay, so that's it. That is how we sketch the graph of a hyperbola given an equation and with center located at the origin. So this is how we draw the points or we plot the points of the foci, the vertices, and the covertices. And this is how we solve for the equation of the asymptotes. Again, so do not forget that among the three variables, C is the largest. Therefore, the formula is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So what if you're now asked to get the length of the transverse axis? In order for you to get the length of the transverse axis, remember that the formula is just 2a for the transverse axis. And for the length of the conjugate axis, that is just 2b. So I hope you learned something from this session in sketching the graph of the hyperbola given its center and its equation. If you have comments, if you have suggestions, or if you have questions that needs an answer, 
do not hesitate to message me on Facebook or to comment on my YouTube channel. And if you're not yet subscribed on my YouTube channel, please do subscribe and like my videos. Once again, I am Engineer Jad Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.